Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and to the next video in my collection series. This time we're going to be tackling concealers, powders, and setting sprays. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, welcome back to the bathroom floor. Uh, we are starting our next category, which is my concealer collection. Slightly out of hand, but I do have multiple shades of some you'll see in a second. So we're going to go ahead and get right into it. This here is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Conceal thing. I got this recommended to me by someone on TikTok. I forget who exactly, but it's actually really nice. It's got pretty decent coverage, a really nice finish. It's not like full, full coverage, but it's good as like an everyday concealer. And it's surprisingly long lasting. So, you know, if you're on a budget, think about it. Yes, the Jeffree Star Magic Star Concealer. I've had this for a really long time. It's fine. It's it's good. You know, like it lasts a long time. It I think the shade's a little too dark for me. Um, but you know, it doesn't crease and it's 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 nice, you know? Like I'm not going to get rid of it just because he's kind of a jerk. Um, and I do like the packaging. So. <laughs> this is the Elf like clicky pen concealer. I I can't even read the name anymore, it rubbed off. I think it's like the Flawless Brightening Concealer or something. It's nice, I'm trying to pan this right now, so I keep this in sort of my everyday makeup section. And it works fairly well, it's pretty sheer coverage, but it's good as like an everyday thing, like when I go to the hospital and I just wanna look like I didn't sleep for five hours the night before. This is good for that. This is a real gem. This is the Pat McGrath uh, Sublime Fetish concealer. It's lovely. <laughs> it's very, very thick. A little bit goes an extremely long way, but holy crap, the coverage. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It, it's luxury, but it makes sense. So I have two shades of this Wet n Wild Incognito concealer. I enjoy it, obviously, because I bought a second shade. I bought this bottom shade first and it was way too light. And then I bought this top shade and it's a little too dark. So generally I'll just put on a little of each. It's a really, really thin formula, but super pigmented. So it doesn't really crease, but you still get really great coverage. And while we're doing ones that I have multiple shades of, uh, it's time for me to sort of admit my shame. I have four <laughs> shades of the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. And it, it, essentially the way that this happened was I got one in a boxy charm that was too yellow and too dark. So then I ordered a shade and it was still too yellow, but like a better depth. And then my mom passed one on to me that was not yellow, but still too dark. And then I went to TJ Maxx and found a really, really light and not at all yellow shade. So Obviously, I love this formula. think it's great. Use it as concealer or foundation. Big fan of it. Um, so I kind of just mix and match to, to create what I'm looking for. At the, look, I know this is a problem, okay? But I'm, you can't pry these away from me, so. I think this is the last one I have multiple shades of. This is the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. It's nice. I think this is comparable to the Tarte Shape Tape, actually. So if you liked that one, but you want a cheaper alternative, this one's good for that. Again, similar situation to the Wet n Wild. I bought this bottom one and it was way too light. Bought the top one and it's a little dark. I generally mix them together and it works really well. And while we're on the subject of Shape Tape, this is my second tube of this. I really am a fan of it. I know that it can be a little bit drying uh, under the eyes mostly, so I tend to use this as a spot concealer. I can use it under the eyes if I kind of use it sparingly and moisturize well though. So I like this one. This is the Catrice Liquid Camouflage. This is my second tube of this one. I do like this. I don't even know if they sell this at like Ulta anymore. I think Catrice pulled out of Ulta. Anyway, that's a tangent. This is pretty nice. It's really thin. I don't think it's high coverage. I think it's more of a medium, but the thinness means that it doesn't really crease on me and it lasts a really, really long time. So I like this one a lot. On the subject of Catrice, however, we have this new one, newer, the True Skin Concealer. This one's really nice as well. When I first tried it, I didn't love it, but it's growing on me and I wanna keep using it a little bit more uh, to fully flesh out my thoughts on this one. But I have been liking this more and more the more that I use it. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hydrating 
hyaluronic whatever <laughs> concealer. Um, it's nice. I like this one. I will use this in a couple of different ways. This is a good one to just kind of throw in my bag when I need to touch up my face. It works under my eyes. It spot conceals fairly well. And yeah, I just, I like this one. This is a holy grail for me. The NARS uh, Soft Matte Pot Concealer. It's absolutely amazing. I use this to spot conceal. I don't really use it under my eyes, but it has this sort of blurring silicone-y quality that flattens out all of your blemishes. It's it's crazy. It makes it look like you have no pores, no blemishes. It's it's wild. Um, I The way that I've seen this used is to put it on under foundation. So I've tried that. It works well. It works well over foundation. I, I think this is just really, really worth it. On a related note, the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This one's a little touch too dark and too yellow for me, uh, but I use it anyway. I, I can correct it fairly easily because I just really like the formula. Mine is getting a little bit dried out, so I think I'd like to pick up a new one in a new shade at some point. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna keep using it, really enjoy it. Okay, this one. I don't know what to do with this. This might be an unpopular opinion. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. And I don't know, this got a lot of hype. It still gets a lot of hype. It got a lot of hype when it came out. But I feel like every time I use this under my eyes, it just looks bad. And I've worked with it, I really have. I've tried it with my favorite powders, I've tried it with different skincare, different sunscreens, and I just feel like it always looks bad. Maybe it's just me, but like, I, I don't relish the thought of using this, so I think I'm actually gonna declutter this one. I don't know, I don't know. Is it just me? Am I the problem? This is the Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Concealer. I like this one a lot, it's, it's good, you know? It's a drugstore classic, I feel like, and uh, it does what it says it's gonna do. Not the best, but good enough to keep. I have this mini of the Tarte Shape Tape Ultra Creamy. I bought this in a shade that's a little too light for me, so I usually will mix this with some of those concealers that are a little too dark for me, and it helps that it's creamy because my under eyes need all the hydration they can get. This is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Concealer. I like this one, it's nice. I, I would say it's semi-similar to the NARS. I think that's kind of what they were going for. And I, th I think it's semi-similar. It's a little bit thinner in consistency, but the coverage level and the finish are similar. So I, I don't even know if you can get this in store anymore, but if you can, it's nice. This is the Revlon Candid Concealer. I like this one. Another one that's really good to just throw in my bag that I can use under my eyes or all over my face. It's a good one. It's a go-to. This is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Concealer and I am conflicted about this. I like the formula. I like the finish. I like how it wears. The color is just a little iffy for me. It's just so... It's so pink on me. You it, you can't really tell when it's on my hand, but it's it's so pink, it like leans gray on my skin, I feel like. it's You can't really tell from the swatch, but I don't know. I feel like it's usable and I do like the formula, but keep in mind that uh, the lightest shade is A, not all that light, and B, very pink. This is the First Aid Beauty Bendy avocado concealer thing. This got a lot of hype at one point on beauty YouTube, and I do like it. It's a really, really thin formula. I would call it light to medium in coverage, so I also like this one on an everyday basis, but you definitely have to set this one because it stays very, very creamy, and it will move around if you don't set it down. Sort of similar but different. This is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. This is a little mini tube, but this stuff lasts forever because you need like less than the head of a pin of an amount of this to for under an eye. It's, it's crazily pigmented, but I say similar to the last one in that it also stays extremely creamy. It is not self-setting. You must set this or you're gonna look like a greasy, creasy mess. However, Oh boy, my dark circles love this stuff. <laughs> this is the Laura Mercier, I, want, I think it's called the Flawless Fusion. Yeah, the Flawless Fusion Concealer. It's nice, it's very, very thin, so it sets down well, doesn't really crease. Not that much in the way of coverage, I would say almost medium, but again, good for every day. 
it's it's nice. You don't really have to set it if you don't want to. So, you know, it's it's reliable. This is the NYX Born to Glow. You can't get this anymore. I'm sorry. It is really, really nice. Um, the one thing I don't like about it is this stupid sponge applicator that's always dirty. Um, really good. Medium coverage. Radiant finish. I enjoy it. However, the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme, the one to rule them all is the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. Holy crap, I love this stuff. It is so beautiful. This, honestly, if I had to get rid of every other concealer in my collection and I could only keep this one, I feel like I'd be totally okay with that. This absolutely blew me away. It is so, it's so pigmented, but so thin, so creamy, so hydrating. It, oh my goodness, I can wear this all over my face or under my eyes. I can do, I can do anything with this. It is perfect. You can set it, not set it, depending on the look that you're going for. I just, I, I could sing the praises of this all day, but the short version of it is, this is the best concealer I have, hands down. All right, so that's it for concealers. Let's go ahead and move on to my powder collection. All right, y'all, moving right along to my powder collection. As you can see, I have quite a few. Let's get started here with this. This is the tragedy of a lifetime. And no, I'm not about to tell you that I hated it because I absolutely love it. It is beautiful. What I'm about to tell you is that I absolutely shattered it. It, it is destroyed. So that is where this comes in. Uh, I emptied out the e.l.f. putty primer because it, putty eye primer, because it was terrible. And I put the loose remnants of my Pat McGrath powder in here and I will use every bit of it because it's delightful. It makes your under eyes look so smooth and a little bit brighter. And I just, this, this made me really, really sad. Stick into these little ones. This is the Derma Blend powder. I am probably gonna get rid of this because I literally just never think about it because it's so small and just so like unremarkable to me. Yeah, I don't know. She's gonna go. This is the Laura Mercier. I think it's the yeah the Secret Brightening powder. I like this. It's not amazing for like setting like long wear wise, but it is really brightening and it does smooth things over. So I like it for that. This I love. I use this all the time. This is a little teeny tiny of the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydra powder. This is so good. I 100% get why this has so much hype and why they charge so much for it. Um, honestly, when I run out of it, I might buy like a real one. <laughs> it's really, really good. All right, we'll start with this row of pressed compacts here. I have this e.l.f. Perfect Finish HD powder. I would say that this is fairly similar in texture and finish to the um, IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores powder. Really enjoy this. Uh, if you're looking for a powder that's super similar to that, this is your, this is your girl and it's what, six bucks? Recommend. This, unfortunately, I don't think is available anymore, which is a real shame. This is the NYX No Filter powder. I'm not gonna touch it because it gets hard pan really easy, but um, it's got just a hair of a tint to it, but mainly it's just really, really smoothing, really blurring. Um, I love a finishing powder, so this is amazing for that. Speaking of loving a good finishing powder, this is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Luminous Light. I love her. This just has a way of going on and smoothing everything over, leaving a little bit of a shine. So beautiful. This is the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Mattifying Powder. I am not usually one for a mattifying powder, but if I'm gonna use one, it's gonna be this. I've heard this compared in terms of finish to the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Powder. And while I don't have one, I have sort of borrowed and tried one before and this is incredibly similar in finish. I don't generally use this under my eyes. I kind of just use it if I went a little bit overboard on the glow to just tone things down a little bit and it works amazingly. I'm gonna try not to spend too long on this one and I'm also gonna try not to blind you. This is the Becca Light Shifter Finishing Veil. It is absolutely beautiful. This has recently been dethroned as my favorite finishing powder, but it is still my favorite glowy finishing powder, even more than the Hourglass. I love this stuff. This is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. Uh, I got mine at TJ Maxx for fairly cheap. 
I heard a lot of hype about it, and it is fairly nice. It's got a lot of coverage if you want to use it for that. You can kind of apply it with like a wet sponge, and it'll apply fairly nicely. Or you can kind of dust on a light layer for a little bit of um, additional coverage and just sort of setting and mattifying just a touch. It's more of a natural finish. I like this one. Again, one you can't get anymore, so I'm not going to harp on it too long. Milani Prep Set and Glow. This is absolutely perfect. Very similar to the Becca one uh, with just the glowy finish and the smoothing property. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my all-time holy grail setting powder for under the eyes. This is the Flower Light Illusion Powder. Uh, I've heard this also called a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Powder, and I disagree. This is better. Run, don't walk. For the record, this is my second one. I went through an entire one of these. You see how many powders I have? I went through an entire one of these. That's my greatest endorsement of this product. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on to the other basket. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in the shade Reserve Your Cabana. As you can see, it's extremely fair, so I find it actually works really, really well as a finishing powder. It adds just a hint of color to the face, but it also has this beautiful slight sheen and uh, kind of a blurring finish, so this is great. I don't even know if you can get this anymore. I'm gonna be sad if I can never find this again. Essence Brighten Up Banana Powder, love this stuff. I've gone through, I wanna say, two of these. This I don't love to set all by itself, but if I just wanna add a little, the tiniest dusting of this will help really, really brighten up dark circles. So I love this. This is my new Holy Grail finishing powder. This is the Kosas Cloud set. As you can see, she's been used and abused. I, I have no idea how this is this good. It is so finely milled, so lightweight, so blurring. It takes down shine, but still lets the shine show through. It never looks cakey. It never looks powdery makeup-y. I do not know how they did this, but I'm obsessed with this. If my makeup ever just looks not quite right in finish and I just want to make it, I don't know, just perfect, this dusts it all over the face and it's incredible. This is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Creamy Powder Foundation. I like this. I don't really use it as a powder foundation very often. Mostly I'll just use it uh, to add a little bit more coverage in spots where I feel like the coverage isn't amped up enough, but I don't really want to add more cream products. Um, it has its uses for me. It does, it does what it needs to do. This is the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. This, to me, kind of works similarly to what I would describe as like a loose version of the cloud set powder. I really feel like it has a similar effect to that powder, but loose and they did it first. So I love this. If you're a loose powder fan, but you want the same effect as the cloud set, this is the closest I think you can get in a loose powder form. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. Love this stuff. The Halo Glow line is sort of making a resurgence and I'm so glad it is because this is amazing. Love this as a finishing powder. Love this as an under eye setting powder. Love this for pretty much anything. It's gorgeous. It's not glowy, so don't let the Halo Glow name fool you. It's, it's really more just kind of a satin finish that looks skin-like. It's gorgeous. This was kind of a surprise find in a boxy charm ages ago. This is the Ciate London Everyday Vacay Loose Powder. The thing that's so impressive about this to me is that it is so, so unbelievably fine. This is the finest powder I've ever used. It is, the, the, it's imperceptible. It is so thin. And that works amazingly for never ever having cakey looking under eyes. If I'm working with a concealer that I just feel like looks a little bit thick and I want to put the least amount of additional product on my under eyes possible, this is such a great go-to. Sorry, I'm blinding you. <laughs> but this is incredible, seriously. If you ever find this, highly recommend. It's gorgeous. I also got this in a boxy charm. This is the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. This is really nice. This is, I'm not even fully sure how to describe this. It's, it's a workhorse setting powder, you know? Like I've never used this under my eyes and thought they look bad. It, it, it does the job, it does what it needs to do. <laughs> I feel a similar way about the Fenty Beauty setting powder. I feel like this is just a workhorse powder. When I need something tried and true, she's there for me. 
I've had this pretty vulgar one for ages. It came in a boxy charm, and while it is nice, and like, no, I can't really imagine that it ever looks particularly bad under the eyes, I also just never think about it. So if I'm reaching for, you know, a workhorse setting powder, I'm either gonna go for my Fenty or my Beauty Bakery, like I said. I have a couple more in here that I would call workhorse setting powders. This one, I never really think of, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. Oh, the Becca Hydra Mist setting powder. This was so hyped up when it first came out. It's got, the, my cap thing came off. It's got this net and it had the powder that had like the cooing sensation. I actually used a good bit of this. Um, you can see there, kind of. Uh, but it, it's her time. It's her time. I used a bunch of it. The cooling sensation thing is completely gone. It doesn't do that at all anymore. Um, it was good, but you know, Becca is no more and this is past her prime. Revlon Candid Powder, uh, the anti-pollution thing is a bunch of crap, but it works fairly well. And again, you know, as far as like drugstore workhorses, it's this one and the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. These are fantastic. Love them both. Honestly, I feel like I keep this around just because it's such a classic, the Laura Mercier uh, translucent setting powder. I don't think I'll ever be able to get rid of this. Not even because it's the best setting powder in my collection anymore, but purely because it's one of my oldest. And wow, what an icon. What an iconic product, huh? Fit Me times two. We have the Fit Me Loose and Fit Me Pressed. Both are fantastic for kind of different reasons. This for a little bit more mattifying of the face and uh, sort of a lighter under eye look. This dusted all over the face just creates this like blurred out, gorgeous, ugh, so perfect. Um, they both work for me as either setting or finishing powders and I love that about them. Dynamic duo. The Fit Me line, you cannot go wrong. And last but certainly not least, we have this CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powder. Uh, this got a lot of hype as being a gorgeous finishing powder, and I agree. It's absolutely lovely. Um, it's a little bit light, so I kind of have to go with a light hand if I'm going to dust this all over or I get kind of pale. But, you know, if you add a little bit of bronzer or you're going over a foundation that's slightly dark, this is absolutely perfect. Don't usually use it under my eyes. I'm sure it would work. I just have under eye powders I like better. But this is stunning. I was just about to put these away when I realized I missed one because it's with my everyday makeup. This is the number seven Lift and Luminate powder. It is perfection. I'm working on panning this. I adore this. This is sort of my second in command to my flower beauty. Love, 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 love. Very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury as well. Highly recommend. All right, that is it for powders. Let's go ahead and move on to the last category for this video. Okay, and last up for this video, we are gonna talk about my setting spray collection, which is not nearly as bad as I kind of thought it was gonna be. So let's go ahead and get into it. We'll start right in the front here with one that uh, obviously I hate. <laughs> uh, this is my Pixie Hydrating Milky Mist. I have a backup of this. It's ready in the drawer. I'm just gonna use what very, very little I have left here. I love this. This is, if I look just a little too powdery, a little too makeup-y, this is the thing. Every time I spray this on, it smells divine. And it just makes me look a little bit dewy and just mm, so good. So, so good. Speaking of really, really good, this is the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. I have the jumbo one. Uh, my hands aren't just really tiny. <laughs> this was on sale at Ulta not too long ago, so I had to pick it up. This is amazing. I love the fact that it's a continuous mist, like a hairspray. So, so good. It's so fine. It goes on amazingly. It makes my makeup stay on all day and also melts it all together and just really makes it look skin-like again. So love this one. An old classic, Urban Decay All Nighter. It kind of melts your makeup in, but mostly this one's for staying power and it does a really great job at that. So it definitely does what it says it's gonna do. So I keep her around always. That being said, if you want the same thing, Milani make it last. Keep your makeup on all the time, melt it in just a little bit, but mostly it's the staying power. I honestly would just as soon buy this as buy the Urban Decay and it's what, half the price? So this is a good one. I also have the Milani Make It Last sunscreen spray. I bought this cause like I was going to the beach one day and 
I, I wanted to be able to reapply my sunscreen. I don't think I've ever actually used it. And I literally just sprayed it on my hand because someone had said that it has a really weird scent and holy crap, it, it oh, I don't even know how to describe that scent. I, and it's like lingering too. It's not going away. <laughs> I think I might actually declutter this because there's no way I'm going to use this now that I know how it smells. <laughs> On the other hand, something that smells really good is this Farsali Rose Gold Skin Mist. I don't think they sell this anymore. I'm pretty sure false Farsali doesn't even really exist. Um, but this is beautiful. It's another one of those ones that really just kind of melts all your makeup together, makes you look a little bit dewy. Uh, you know, you, you can get stuff that's just as good now. You're, you're not missing out if you didn't get your hands on this. But I do like how it smells, so that's a plus. One of the things that you can get that will do almost exactly what that one does is the L'Oreal Shake and Glow Dew Mist. Again, this isn't really gonna help your staying power much, but it will make you so glowy and beautiful. Love this one. And on a related note, the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hydrating Mist will make you glowy and beautiful and dewy and melt out your makeup together. Once again, not really the best for staying power, but I kind of have my go-tos for staying power and I like the dew, so love her. Speaking of liking the dew, this is a little mini of the Lila B Aglow Face Mist. The full size of this is absurdly expensive, so I'm not gonna buy it, but you know, I like the mini. It's nice. Makes you very glowy. Very, very glowy. This is heavy duty glow. I have the Smashbox Primer Water, and I kind of realized I wasn't using it as a primer, like ever. But it says set and refresh, so I've been using it a little bit as a setting spray, and I like it for that. I feel like it does actually help extend the wear of my makeup and melt everything together, so I'll, I'll end up using it up. This is a little mini sample thing of the Benefit Professional. Uh, it's so almost out. I really like this, though. I'm probably actually going to buy either... This is like a sample size, so I'm probably either going to buy the mini one or the full-size one when this runs out, because it's great. It, it really does kind of blur out your pores a little bit. It, I mean, it's not dramatic because it's a setting spray. It's not going to do anything super dramatic for your pores. But I really think it has a nice finish to it. So, recommend. This is the Ciate London Everyday Vacay Setting Spray. I feel like this one adds a little bit of glow, melts your makeup down, and helps with staying power. All the things I like in a setting spray. So, I hang on to her. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Setting Spray. Again, kind of a broken record here, but extends the staying power of my makeup melts it together a little bit. This one, I feel like I don't love the sprayer on, but this one's a little bit better for staying power than most of my setting sprays are, save for like the Milani and Urban Decay. So I keep it around for that purpose. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, is the Milk Hydro Grip Setting Spray. As you can see, I love this. Um, I think this might actually have dethroned my Morphe Setting Spray as my favorite. I feel like it just has a little more of a, of a natural glow and melting all that makeup together. It just does it a little bit better than the Morphe one. Um, but it also has that staying power. It, I mean, it's not as heavy duty in terms of staying power as like the Urban Decay or the Milani Make It Last, but I don't really usually wear my makeup for all that long anyway. So for the purposes of what I do, this is is perfection. I would not change a single thing about it. And yes, I will replace it when I run out with a full size. And that is it, you guys. That's my entire collection of concealers, powders, and setting sprays. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And if you did, I hope you will like and subscribe down below so I can see you in the next one. Bye, you guys.